वेलकम टू इंजीनियरिंग फंडा फैमिली दिस वीडियो इज अ पार्ट ऑफ आर्म प्रोसेसर वीडियो लेक्चर सीरीज एंड इन दिस वीडियो आई एल बी गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन यू इंटरप्स इन आर्म सेवन इंटरप्स आर ऑल्सो रिफर्ड एज एक्सेप्शन माई डियर स्टूडेंट्स इफ यू सी माई प्रीवियस वीडियो बेस्ड ऑन मोड्स ऑफ आर्म सेवन इन दैट आई हैव ऑलरेडी एक्सप्लेन हाउ यूजर इज हैविंग एग्जीक्यूशन ऑफ डिफरेंट मोड्स and if you observe those modes are getting triggered with respect to some shots of interrupt so here you need to understand when that mode is getting executed by some interrupt how that interrupt service routine is been provided let me explain you that by one practical example for example user is executing one main program over here and while user is executing main program as if interrupt is coming then arm 7 will have to give service to this interrupt so what will happen is here arm 7 will perform some steps after performing those steps it will execute interrupt service routine program once interrupt service routine program is completed arm will have to come back to main program and that should be at exactly the location where interrupt have came right so this is referred as interrupt service routine and for that few steps are happening that you need to understand and those steps are happening with respect to operating modes of arm 7 only right how it is happening let us try to understand that so my dear students here as i have said let us say we are having main program execution over here and during execution let us say interrupt is coming and when interrupt comes at that time arm 7 should provide service to this interrupt but before that there are few basic things that you should know here with main program program counter is there which will be indicating address of next instruction right so once you provide service to this interrupt over here that program control that should come over here after servicing of that interrupt right so one thing that should be clear to you once you give service to this interrupt after completion of service you should come back over here at the address pointed by program counter right now now with this main program there are few more things that you should know see this main program is having status with respect to flag register and that is referred as cpsr current program status register so that cpsr of this main program that should not change right so here before you give service to this interrupt you should have to load that cpsr somewhere now i'll explain you how service to this interrupt is happening and how many steps are happening before isr execution so my dear students as i have told you this main program is having current program status register and that should not change when you execute interrupt service so first of all cpsr will get loaded into spsr my dear students all the interrupts are happening with arm 7 that is happening with respect to different modes so here different modes are having their separate spsr those spsrs are used to load cpsr of this main program right so first of all main programs cpsr that will get loaded into spsr now whatever mode that is getting triggered by this interrupt that will be indicated by cpsr and that will happen with respect to mode bits so you should know my dear students cpsr is having d0 to d4 total 5 bits that will indicate which mode is happening right now so after that mode bits will get changed with cpsr and you should know my dear students original cpsr of this main program now that is there with spsr right now whatever things are happening that is happening with respect to this interrupt only now my dear students service to this interrupt that should happen in arm state only so t bit that should be equals to 0 right and in arm states you should know my dear students 32 bits of instructions are available and isr interrupt service routine that will happen in arm state only right so arm 7 will make t bit is equals to 0 original program cpsr is having original t bit but now it is already there with spsr 
So to give service to ISR, it will make this T bit is equals to zero. And my dear students, this main program's address that is there with PC. So that PC should be loaded into LR of this interrupt. So all the interrupts are having their own LR link resistor, right? And inside that link resistor, you will be loading the value of this main program's PC, right? Why main program's PC is loaded into LR? The reason is when you want to retrieve back to main program, at that time it should come over here. And once we load this PC into link resistor of this given interrupt, all you need to have is you will have be new resistor set available for this given mode. And my dear students, you should know you will have to jump over here with this interrupt and for that well defined ISR address is there. So whatever mode is there based on that fixed ISR address will be there. I'll show you once I complete these steps how many ISR addresses are there. So that ISR address that will get loaded into PC. So now your program control that is there at interrupt service routine. Now once program control is loaded with that ISR address you will be having ISR program execution over here. Once you complete ISR program you will have to jump back to main program. But before you jump back to main program you will have to execute few steps. What are those steps? You will have to load this original PC from LR as well as you will have to load this CPSR from SPSR. So here my dear students first of all this CPSR that will get loaded from SPSR. So that will also restore T bit. The reason is T bit is there inside that CPSR only, right? And my dear students, you should know this LR which was holding main program's address. Now that will transfer that inside PC. And now it will reactivate user mode resistor and your program control will come over here. So now you are allowed to execute main program over here. So these are the steps that is happening, right? Now, as I have told you, with each and every interrupt, well-defined ISR addresses are there. Let us see how those addresses are there. So my dear students, as I have told you, with different modes, here interrupts are happening, right? So in sequence, you'll have to remember this. See, reset, that is happening with respect to supervisor mode. Then undefined instruction is there that is there with undefined mode, then SWI instruction execution that is inserting supervisor mode. After that, prefetch abort and data abort that is happening, that is there regarding abort mode. Then here this address is resolved by ARM. After that, IRQ and FIQ that is happening, right? So that is how interrupts are there. Here addresses that you can remember easily, but you will have to remember this interrupts in sequence to make sure this addresses are there with given interrupt. See, addresses are happening as per initial address is 0 in normal ISR and then you will have to add 4 bytes. So here, after this address, again another 4 bytes are there, then 4 bytes that you need to add in sequence, right? And that is how addresses are there, right? If you observe, last interrupt that is FIQ, after that you will be having no such interrupt available. So here if you observe my dear students, ISR is having only 4 byte address, right? So you might be thinking how long your ISR program is. My dear students, here we are not writing complete program, at this address we will be executing branch instruction and at that particular branch you will be writing ISR program, right? So here 4 byte is allocated for branch instruction only. But if you observe last interrupt that is FIQ, after that there is no such interrupt. So here you don't need to execute branch instruction. So here you don't need to execute branch instruction means what? Directly you can write ISR program over here. So here my dear students, fast interrupt that is fast compared to other interrupt. Why? The reason is here there is no branch execution when you saw this FIQ as well as FIQ is having their dedicated resistors which is not available with any other interrupt, right? So directly program can be executed from here and that service will be fast. 
my dear students here this is regarding isr address which is normal address but as if you wanted to have higher address with isr then that is also available in which memory location will be there with respect to f f f f and then similar addressing is there right so that is the regarding high isr address for example if you insert your memory which is there with respect to last address in that case you will have to take this higher isr address but if your memory is there with respect to initial address in that case you can have normal isr address right so that is how different isr addresses are there and with respect to this addresses at last program counter that will take that isr address and isr program will get executed in that remember here once that isr address comes inside pc at this isr address there will be branch instruction and that branch will gives you isr program right and my dear students here with respect to priority also you should know how interrupt is having priority in arm 7 reset is having highest priority data about is having second highest priority fiq is having third irq is having fourth prefetch about is having five and undefined and software interrupt that is having sixth priority that is how priorities are there with arm 7 here i have seen many confusion with students in which they are asking me can you explain me steps of task switching in arm 7 tdmi so my dear students these are only the steps which is happening in task switching you see here we are operating with different tasks only right and different tasks are assigned with different modes so with arm 7 tdmi task switching steps are this only right so this is how my dear students arm is providing interrupt service routine and i hope it is clear to you still if any query is there what i want is you just post that in comment box so that we can have further discussion thank you so much for watching this video